amigos, soy Evisis y aquí estamos en el concierto de Machine Gun Kelly y quiero que ustedes se me queden en sintonía porque aquí les traigo la exclusiva, una entrevista junto al artista. Quiero hacerte una introducción a todos los latinos and I know that you don't understand a word that I just said. But <laughs> the answer is it's nine and a half inches, ladies and gentlemen. Nine and a half. <laughs> no, but can you say a little bit like I love the Latinas or something like that? I don't have to say that to be forced. You can just tell me to. You can just. You can just ask me if I love Latinas, and I will tell you 100% C. Si. <laughs> bueno, that's good to know. Um, I wanted to say, you know, it's it's a honor to be here because I feel like I'm sitting next to one of the next greatest icons in the making. And Good Lord. <laughs> thank you for thank you. You know what's cool about you? You know what's cool about this is that is that I mean this is this this come up is exactly like every one of the greats come ups, man. Like there was no hype involved. Everyone hated me when I came out. There's still lingering hate. No one there's I mean one fourth of the people get me. The other three fourths are just lost. Um And that's what's so good about it because it's just like there are there's every factor working against us. So when when those people that get it get it, they like get it get it, and they're like, yo, you're bugging. This kid is like, this kid like you know, I I truly believe we have everything. I wanted to first point out when I first heard you, I didn't know what you looked like because I know that a lot of people sometimes are biased when they see you, listen to your music, and they're like, who's this white boy? Because there is in the entertainment industry, especially in you know the rap genre there's segregation but when i listen to your music the reason why i said i'm like wow this kid is an icon in the making because i can say that you are a great lyricist and if i were to compare you to anyone which it shouldn't be a comparison i i would even say you can be compared to tupac and that is a legend i was thinking about it i'm like this kid is someone who still hasn't gotten all the attention that you should be getting and i wonder and and i don't know and maybe correct me if i'm wrong sometimes some of the greatest artists greatest poets greatest you know painters don't get acknowledged until after they die, after they die. how do you feel about that no, I, i've been saying that our work was like a van gogh painting for the longest i believe our this is our starry sky you know it's just like or Starry Night, excuse me. Um, um, I go out in front of a sold out crowd every day on this tour and I, we've never had radio play. The top, the most I ever got on the billboard was number 98. You know, like we came out, we kept up with everybody who had number ones as far as album sales go. We have I'm like a real cult, cult fan base. I mean, people who will not stop until the rest of the world acknowledges us. and. I, dude, I, I just see all this and I'm like, yo, I, I know that grown men and women aren't like these grown men and women and these even like the children and their parents who are driving six hours to bring their kids to an MGK show. Like, I know they aren't insane, you know, like the rest of the world is just doesn't get it, man. And it's cool. I understand that, you know, I, I went down the wrong path last year with or the year before that with drugs and then and, and sober enough. I had a lot of attitude problems and um, I burned a lot of bridges, but. It's entertainment, and that's what it's all about, man. It is about it is about like speaking how you really feel, and everyone was like, they like the weirdos and they hate the realos. I'm just a realo. I just wanna make sure that I make a point with every show to thank you, kids, for spending your money and waiting in that line out there in the cold to come inside, man. I just say, you know, I've actually been to one of your concerts, and when I saw you perform, uh, that's when I really, I think, got. I got interested in you as an artist because I'm like, this kid has passion. He has love for what he's doing. He's not just doing it for the industry. He's doing it for his fans. I know you guys are the same way because you have to have a soul if you like my music because I put my heart and my soul into my music. You know, they say that music is healing and that's what your music is bringing out to the fans. Yeah, that dude walked for the first time on stage. Like, I don't, that's nuts. I'm white. I look like a punk rock kid. Like, it, it, nothing like this has been seen, and that's why I'm so lost. Like, how could you not see the beauty in this? A kid with cerebral palsy walked, man. Like, walked. Like, on some I touch you, your heel type stuff. He walked. That was not a gimmick. That was real. That's still my friend to this day. I, just I, would, I would say that that's the power of your music. Dude, it's crazy, man. I mean, he had 2,000 kids in there screaming for him who knew him from a video of me meeting him before and him saying those words. And he said it. He was like, I'm going to try. 
and he didn't fail, and it's nuts. It's crazy, man. And Machine Gun Kelly isn't me. It's like this whole group of kids. That's what I'm saying. Like it's when someone, it's not me bigging up myself. It's like just all this is just crazy, dude. These are kids who uh, who sheltered us when before we had hotel rooms and we were, you know, letting, they were we were crashing on their couches, letting us use their showers. These are kids who bring us food and snacks. These are kids who camp out in below freezing weather just because they want the front spot, just, be, just so they can get sweat on them. It's nuts. So do you think that your success is going to, it's going to be something that's going to take a little bit longer, but it's going to last longer? Because you see a lot of rappers these days, they last a year, they last a couple of months, and then you never hear from them again. But that's why I can't have that because no one, I, I wasn't around for, I've, dude, I've been in people's, I've been that little gnat in people's hair for, for two years now. And you know, I haven't gone away and I've done nothing but consistently excel. I've won awards, I've done all this stuff and I'm still swept under the rug as if I'm not a problem, but I'm done this year. I'm in everybody's face. And I'm I wanted to ask you about your mixtape, the one that is out, uh, that's coming out now, uh, Black Flag. What is that about? What is it that you know, you're not surrendering? The Black Flag, what does it mean? It means that we're not insane. The world is insane. The world is listening way too slow. I'm not going too fast. They don't know how to listen, man. Like, and, and I'm not, and I'm not being nice about it anymore. You're not about to take this beautiful movement away from the rest of the world who hasn't had the chance to hear it because you keep trying to stomp on us. And you need to keep on going because it's something like I said. You do have a very big community, a very big fan base that does believe in you, that does truly believe in your music and what it does for them. You write a lot of inspirational music that, while you're singing, they're living through you. A lot of people who do work the nine to five, who do have a dream, not necessarily of becoming an artist, but have that dream that needs to be pushed every day because a lot of people are living a life that they need to get out of what they're in. You know whether it be drugs, uh, abusive household, and your music does give them that inspiration. Yeah, uh, you know, I did a song about, for those kids, it's a cover of a Rise Against song called Swing Life Away. And uh, you know, we, we, we took that song, and me and this guy I was on Warped Tour with, his name's Kellen Quinn, he got a beautiful voice and a, and a great band. We got together and we just made a song kind of like for those kids who don't maybe don't have aspirations to, to be the biggest star in the world, like, you know, like I did. But like, I'm telling them like, it's okay as long as you're happy where you're at, man, just sit, you know, swing life away, man. Just be like, be at ease with who you are, and be cool with for the rest of your life as long as you're happy, you know. And that's what, that was one of those messages that we wanted to portray. It was like, yo, you don't have to always want to be a rapper. You don't have to always want to be the best, man. Sometimes it's cool to just be you, man. And talking about um, rise again, swing life away. You have made, you know, the, the song in the past, "Save Me" with uh, Avenge Sevenfold. And I want to know, are we going to be seeing that a little bit more of rock? I, I mean, I think, I think, I just feel like it's always kind of been present. I, like, I, I, but I, I'm always going to be a rapper. I, I mean, I can't scream or sing. You know, I, I scream on stage and stuff, but um, just in the booth, it doesn't translate. But like, I always, I always have that just because I was always the kid that I was. And that's just a lane that no one can ever do the right way. I feel like when we do it, like, you know, like the Avenged Sevenfold thing, like that was so unforced. It was crazy. I was in his house recording him doing that personally. It was just me and him in a room. And like... You know, even when Sinister Gates was playing the guitar on there, I was like, he sent me, he, I was like, no, man, shred it, like, shred it, like you, like you want to, like you want to shred it. And he came back and just annihilated it. Even that, I'm like, yo, how is that not a huge deal in music? Like, how did Rolling Stone not, like, pick that up? That's like a huge, that's a, that, I mean, that's a serious, that's a, that's a hardcore metal band, man. And like, and I don't know, I'm just like, isn't that a little weird that you would think that, like, you know, they d decided to collab with a rapper? What do you think, like, the politics did that? Because politics didn't do that. Fate did that. And uh, my love for music did that. I have an event some full tattoo. All that stuff came full circle. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I think is, that's what I'm like. Would you say that people are intimidated by your talent? Yes, man. A hundred percent. Rappers don't want to feature me on it because I murder them every time. Interviewers don't want to interview with me because I tell them that their questions suck if they suck because I really want the people to get to know me for who they really are. And they don't know things like you just said. And they don't, they don't have the intelligence to call me a lyricist because all they know is, yeah, bitch, yeah, bitch. Call me Steve-O. And, and even that was still a beautiful song in, its, in and of itself because I really, that really was a point in time in my life. I was really going through trash and dressing rooms. I was really going through acting an asshole in the streets. And at the end of the day, I, I don't know. I wanted to ask you, there are many artists in the mainstream who are writing songs that are almost 
promoting the the use of drugs. What is your stand on this? Why why would you want to put a burden like drugs onto somebody when drugs are really, you know, we all know the story of drugs. We know what happens. This is like, who, who's an like. Who had an who has an awesome life as a drug addict? Look at Keith Richards, man. It's the ugliest dude I've ever seen in my life, man. You want to look like that when you're old? Ugh, spare me. Well, it doesn't only mess up, you know, your life. It could mess up relationships. But talking about relationships, and I want to end it on this note. Do you have, you know, a certain love in your life, or you know, there is a lot of passion. You have that song, uh, her song. Uh, was that towards someone, you know? And <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I like. I have people I'm really close with, but I just always kind of like just set myself up for a letdown, you know what I'm saying? As soon as I start to get really close to someone, I always push them away, so that's just always been my personality, man, whether it's, you know, guy friends or girlfriends, you know, like when your mom, when your mom leaves you at a young age, you're going to feel some type of way. So, I mean, my mom bounced on me and, you know, just me and women, really, really drugs started because women was, encur was, was encouraging. So you don't have a girlfriend right now or you do? Nah. You don't? Mm. Focusing on the music. I'm lonely out here. I mean, like, you know, I'm a, I'm a very. My manager said to me once. She said, she said she was like, you're an extremely compulsive personality. Like, when you get mad, you don't just get mad. You have to take it like to the 50th level. When you like want to have sex, you don't have sex. You take it to like, you know. Do you think that's why when you're on stage, all that passion just goes? It just like goes straight to your fans. When my father left. When my brother left, I didn't cry, but as you guys make me so happy that I could cry. And that's what's crazy about this whole shit. And I know, I know the show's just started, so you're like, oh my god, I'm sure you're okay. Why the fuck are you getting all emo on us? But it's like, dude, I, yo, you just gotta think about it. Like, remember when, like, no one, remember when no one knew who we were? Like, that shit's crazy, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, you gotta think about it. You gotta think about it, a lot of you have been with me for a long time, man, it was really supportive, and to see this shit is just crazy. Like, I've always do way too much. I have so many more shows, 50 more shows to do, and we, like, we always just do it way too much every night. And ending, you know, with, you know, this tour, what do you expect to gain from this? You know, do you have your mixtape? Are we gonna see an album coming out soon? Um, well, you know, the Black Flag is just what I'm excited about, so I'll probably release that birthday week and just as a gift to the fans and just a gift to music hopefully I really hope that this one kind of gets like the attention that I feel like deserves but I think my attitude and you know you can't deny a sold out tour that's insane and you're and you're only 22 you're about about to be 23 which is crazy because you're you're very young you still have so much ahead of yourself and and I think that that's maybe what it is you're still very young and the world just needs to get ready for that yeah, man, I guess, man. I hope they're ready because I'm the way I'm coming this year is a whole different type of well, machine gun carry than they've ever seen. No, well, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure getting to talk to you, getting to know a little bit more, and getting also the viewers to know a little bit more about yeah. you and your music. And, um, ya ustedes lo saben, aquí estamos. Mundo Fox está aquí en exclusiva con Machine Gun Kelly. Y ya ustedes lo saben, si no lo saben en español, que lo digan en inglés. Lace up. <laughs> I'm going to have to put as depressing I've been in this tour, which I don't know why, because for once in my life, shit's actually going good, you know what I mean? So I don't know. I don't get why my mind fights happiness so hard. I don't know why God just can't seem to let me be okay with all of this. But I want to tell you, I forced my happiness on the other show tonight. Those interviewers, the questions they asked me, for some reason, made me so fucking happy to pull out on the stage tonight. I'm not a human being, and anyone on the mother that's coming in my spot for the top. Let them have it, because when I leave, the whole world drops. Lace up, kill.